a great way to kind of uh, deliver a shock and awe uh, uh, message to anybody connected with Sean. New video from inside Sean Diddy Combs Los Angeles home shows the place in disarray after that raid by federal agents this week. Good evening everyone. Welcome to West Coast Wrap. I'm Alex Savage. That video from inside Combs LA mansion was obtained by TMZ and it shows rooms trashed after federal authorities searched the property for evidence in a sex trafficking investigation. TMZ's Branson Quirk says it appears the feds did not hold back. They really went in and did not hold back in their attempt to find whatever it is that they were looking for. Well, you, if you look closely in the video, you can see drawers pulled. You can see safes broken into. They broke into safes. You could see, you know, drawers on the ground. You could see documents, papers thrown all over the place. Uh, you know, some parts are ripped up in places as well. You know, I mean, the house is completely basically turned upside down. Combs was not at either of his homes in Los Angeles or Miami when agents moved in. Fox's Rebecca Castor has details tonight on what happened when investigators caught up with him in Miami. New photos from TMZ show the moment federal agents confronted Sean Diddy Combs at a Miami airport Monday. In the photos is also Brendan Paul, Combs' alleged drug mule who was arrested on drug charges soon after. The confrontation also happening just hours after two of the rappers' homes were raided in connection to a federal human trafficking investigation. Well, this is a great way to kind of uh, deliver a shock and awe uh, uh, message to anybody connected with Sean that this is, uh, we're serious and we're coming after him and you better cooperate or you're going to be left in the wake. The raids come after several sexual assault lawsuits were filed against Combs. The most recent one coming from music producer Rodney Jones, known as Lil Rod. Jones added sexual assault claims against actor Cuba Gooding Jr. to his complaint Monday. And Brendan Paul is also named in his lawsuit accused of, quote, ensuring payment to sex workers in cash. Even if a handful of these allegations are true, they mean trouble. The three-time Grammy winner has not been arrested or charged, but legal experts believe the feds are building their case against him. In a statement, Combs's attorney calls the raids a premature rush to judgment of Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. Representatives for Gooding Jr. have not responded to Fox News for comment. Combs' attorney also says his client is cooperating with authorities and will fight to clear his name. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, KTVU, Fox 2 News. Arizona is in line to receive $650 million from the federal government to support border communities. The budget bill includes funding for shelter and service programs, money set to run out at the end of this month. Casa Alita supports migrants in southern Arizona, and that organization has feared having to shut down without new funding. Pima County expects to get at least $12 million of that federal funding. In Texas, a plan to arrest migrants suspected of entering the U.S. illegally will remain on hold under an order by a federal appeals court. The ruling prevents enforcement of the Texas law until a three-judge panel can make a final decision about whether it's legal. They'll be hearing arguments next week. This law has drawn comparisons to the so-called Show Me Your Papers law in Arizona, which was partially struck down by the U.S. Supreme Court. Supporters of the Texas law say state enforcement is the only way to slow a surge of migrants. The Biden administration says only federal authorities can enforce immigration law. The U.S. Labor Secretary was in the San Francisco Bay Area today touring a factory that makes electric buses. Secretary Julie Su visited the Livermore headquarters of bus manufacturer Gillig. She met with company leadership to discuss and showcase the company's production of all electric and hybrid transit buses. Secretary Sue says the Biden administration sees Gillig as an example of its commitment to good jobs in the clean energy economy. We see the um, transition to um, more electric buses and, uh, and zero emission vehicles as um, part and parcel of creating a country in which working people do well. It's not a zero-sum game where we have to choose our climate or our working people. And Gillig is an example of exactly how that happens here. Gillig is one of the nation's leading bus manufacturers serving transit agencies nationwide. Construction workers are looking forward to seeing a new high-speed rail project break ground here in the West, hoping it will lead to a hiring boom. 
Brightline Developers is expecting they will need to find about 11,000 workers to build a new rail line that connects Las Vegas with Southern California. Fox 5's Jacqueline Schultz spoke with laborers in Nevada who are hoping to get on the payroll. I grew up working with tools my whole life. I like to see progress of things being built. It's going to bring a lot of jobs to Nevada. Chris has been an apprentice with Local 872 for about a year. He is excited to literally pave the way. When Brightline finally breaks ground around summer, the laborers and operators are the workers who will kick things off and lead crews all the way to the California border. 3,000 union workers are needed across different trades in Southern Nevada. Laborers are pretty much the backbone of the construction industry. First one's on the job and the last one's off of the job. You've seen the laborers lay the foundation at the Raiders Stadium, the Fountain Blue, and soon the demolition of the Tropicana. What they do is crucial to start and complete any massive construction assignment, especially one that's 218 miles long up and down the I-15. The labor is doing the ground clearing, setting the foundation, getting everything prepared for the work going in. We're preparing the tracks and everything such as that. Going all the way to the border is going to be exciting. For us, it's going to open up the doors for new apprenticeship. It's going to take some of our memories and move them from one project to another. Archie Walden explains this spring is prime time for graduating high school students to take a look at the field and earn while you learn. Coming through labor's out of high school, number one, I know a lot of kids are college bound, but you got a free education without having to put any money into it. It's earn while you learn. Or 25 years old, which is, you know, you're making eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year at that point. I would highly recommend it. You get great health care benefits. You get to go to school and learn on the job. Jacqueline Schultz, Fox 5 News, local Las Vegas. A series of light to moderate earthquakes struck off the Oregon coast, but no damage or injuries have been reported. The largest was a magnitude 5.7 that hit about 110 miles off the coastline just before 830 last night. There were five other smaller quakes recorded within about 30 minutes of that quake. People did report feeling the shaking in Oregon as well as California. Coming up tonight here on West Coast Wrap, a man on the run from police clings to the side of a moving car. Tonight, how this dramatic pursuit in Northern California came to an end. Also, surprise pregnancy. Some women believe they are related to taking popular weight loss drugs. We'll check in with medical professionals about this new phenomenon known as Ozempic babies. And in weather, here is our live camera up in Seattle reporting some rainfall, at least at one site to right now. The current temperature of 48 degrees and looks like there's some more rain in the forecast. In fact, more rain moving into California as well. We'll have the update coming up. Across towards the meeting, trying to carjack somebody. Dramatic dash camera video shows a domestic violence suspect in California's Central Valley clinging to the side of a car while being chased by police. This happened back in January in Lathrop. Investigators say Juan Valdez ditched his car during a chase and then tried to carjack someone else. The video shows the driver of that car started to move before Valdez could get inside. The driver did pull over a short time later. In the end, police shot Valdez before taking him into custody, but he did survive those gunshot wounds. He's now facing a number of charges, including carjacking and resisting arrest. Some women using weight loss drugs like Ozempic say they're experiencing surprise pregnancies. Videos about those pregnancies are going viral on social media. Fox 13's Frankie Thompson spoke with a nurse practitioner in Washington about the potential connection between weight loss drugs and fertility. For years, medications like Ozempic have been known to treat diabetes, with weight loss being a side effect. Recent versions of the injections, like Wagovi, were FDA approved for people struggling with obesity. It helps people quite a lot in their journey um, in changing diet and losing weight. So I do prescribe it uh, very frequently. Kim Van Gross is a nurse practitioner at Overlake Medical Center in Bellevue, working in the treatment of obesity for 16 years. She says while working at the Overlake Bariatric and Medical Health Clinic, weight loss medications of the past weren't quite as successful for her patients until drugs like Ozempic hit the market. And then also see it kind of get into the mainstream and become this sort of social movement has been quite shocking to me because I've never experienced this before. 
Uh, but I've also never had such a powerful tool. A powerful tool now showing unexpected results. Pregnancy, the weight loss drug and its impacts on fertility for women trending on TikTok and social media. People who've struggled with fertility issues um, are quite surprised by this because they thought that it was something unrelated or something not fixable. Though Van Gross says her office has not seen pregnancies specifically linked to these medications, she says they commonly treat patients who become pregnant after weight loss. We know that with surgery, weight loss, especially in women with a condition called PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, weight loss can improve their fertility. So some of it is improved fertility with that little bit of weight loss. Trending social media topic, Ozempic Babies, is raising questions how these unplanned pregnancies are happening to women, even when taking birth control pills. Van Gross says the pill's efficiency may be impacted by the weight loss drugs. It can affect the absorption of the pill because it affects digestion. There isn't a directly labeled uh, warning for that, so we haven't seen any direct evidence of that, but it is a concern for oral medication, any of them, including birth control. Other concerns of this unexpected trend now being studied by the U.S. National Library of Medicine, specifically pregnant women who were obese or overweight. Researchers will study how the medication impacts maternal, fetal, and infant outcomes of women exposed to Agovi. Research Van Gross says her office wants to see soon to help patients live a healthy and bright future. With any new medication, we do track side effects and potential long-term consequences. And this would be a big one if we see a, an increase in fertility because we don't actually know the safety of these medications during pregnancy. So the recommendation is to stop these medications two months before becoming pregnant. So the big thing we're going to be tracking is, is this affecting outcomes? And that was Fox 13's Frankie Thompson reporting for us tonight. The nurse practitioner she spoke with says it's important patients understand these drugs are not fertility treatments. Amazon Pharmacy is expanding its same-day medication delivery in two cities, including Los Angeles. The company says this is made possible through artificial intelligence and machine learning. It's already available in Phoenix, Seattle, Austin, Indianapolis, and Miami. The service will cover common medication prescriptions. Amazon says it plans to launch the service in over a dozen other cities by the end of this year. Turning now to our weather and new storms had plowing crews out in Utah today. The state's transportation department says snow had roads covered in the Cottonwood Canyons area, which is east of Salt Lake City. Drivers around here are being warned about the potential for ice, especially on sharp bends. For more, let's bring in KTVU meteorologist Mark Tamayo, who is tracking a couple of systems uh, bringing snow to that area in Utah and also much of California getting ready for more rain this week. Yeah, that's right, Alex. At least a couple systems we are watching in the short term. So far today, as far as the rainfall, it has been focused up in the Pacific Northwest, but I should say it's been moving into Northern California as well. Take a look at some, some of these numbers up in Oregon and Washington. Nothing major, but still, some, you know, some decent rainfall and still some more rain in the forecast for tomorrow. In fact, a very active radar as you can't pick out toward Portland and Seattle and the possibility of uh, some thunderstorms with this uh, pattern setting up. As we move the maps here, we have some rain showers that moved into Northern California and the San Francisco Bay Area. So some rainfall moving from the north and heading to the south in uh, San Francisco in the San Francisco Bay Area for this evening. Here was the uh, the scene up in Seattle today. Lots of cloud cover temperature of 53 degrees in San Francisco. Some off and on rain showers uh, throughout the day, but really picking up uh, this afternoon and into the evening hours. Temperature of 59 and then if you want the sunshine out toward Phoenix, uh, lots of uh, clear blue sky there. Some more readings with temperatures in the upper 70s. So here's the overall weather setup. There's this big circulation here, keeping things unstable for Portland and Seattle for tonight and into a tomorrow. As you can see, that rain line moving into Northern California. Not too much happening in Southern California just yet, but that will be changing, especially as we head toward the weekend. So here's the plan for tomorrow. Periods of rain up in Seattle, uh, some cloud cover for San Francisco, a sun cloud mix with still a chance of a lingering shower, partly sunny skies for Denver, and then more sunshine for Southern California and also out toward uh, Phoenix as well. As we take a look at the forecast model here, showing you the, the rainfall expectations and definitely more than just a few sprinkles. These numbers could really be adding up. But in terms of the rainfall timing, it could be really hitting uh, Southern California as we head toward the weekend. This is also a snow producer in the uh, Sierra. We have a winter storm warning in place right now 
and snowfall potentially could be around 10 to 20 inches. So we continue to add to the snowpack in the mountains as this system comes on board and we'll probably have another warning kick up as we head toward uh, as we head toward Friday. So here's the forecast model once again showing you system number one. Keep an eye on the circulation out here in the Pacific. This will be another rain producer for San Francisco and also for Los Angeles eventually as we take that into the weekend. So the, the forecast over the next uh, few days for Seattle, there's that rain cloud for tomorrow, a chance into Friday, and then a sun cloud mix by Saturday. For San Francisco, looks like the next storm wants to come in on Friday that could linger into Saturday. And there's that rain cloud for Los Angeles as we head towards Saturday. And if you want the uh, sunshine, the warm temperatures, we had those readings in the lower 80s. So Alex, a bit of everything out there, some sunshine in, uh, in Arizona, some uh, Sierra snowfall and some more rain for portions of the, of the West Coast. All right, Mark, thank you. In Arizona, a Super Bowl winner is asking for help tonight to find his championship ring. Fox 10's Lindsey Regas spoke with former 49ers linebacker Chris Washington about what he believes happened to it. Chris believes he lost his Super Bowl ring when he was grocery shopping in Gilbert. Now this is more than just a Super Bowl ring to him. This is the ring that he shows young athletes to inspire them to go to the NFL. Former NFL linebacker Chris Washington remembers winning the Super Bowl with the San Francisco 49ers in 1989 like it was yesterday. A dream come true. I watched football growing up and then all of a sudden I'm one of those guys now. He's worn his Super Bowl ring on his right hand almost every day since. It meant so, so much to me and I use that when I, when I, I have that when I go speak to students and it's something they look, they look they're looking for. Where's the ring? In 2016, Washington was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. He also has significant uh, short-term and long-term memory loss. Um, and it's been attributed to concussion suffered while he was playing football. Chris and his wife, Julia, have tried to pinpoint when he may have lost his ring. I'd gone out to dinner one night and got back home and didn't realize that I didn't have the ring on my finger. Julia says they went to Fry's, Costco, Total Wine, and Winco near Pecos and Higley Roads in Gilbert on March 14th. That's when they may have lost it in a parking lot. I thought the clanking noise was the seat belt buckle hitting the metal door frame. So it just, it never in a million years dawned on me to take a closer look and see if anything had actually fallen. They're hoping this sentimental treasure falls into the hands of a good Samaritan. We'd like to be able to get it back. We hope that someone finds it and um, maybe, maybe through this story, someone recognizes it and reaches out. And if you find the ring, the Washington family is asking that you turn it into Gilbert police or to them directly. We have their contact information on our website, fox10phoenix.com. They are offering a reward. Reporting in Gilbert, Lindsay Regis, Fox 10 News. Age is nothing but a number for one Utah grandmother. Coming up tonight on West Coast Wrap, how she's inspiring a younger generation at rodeos. Also, big Mega Millions winners on two coasts. We'll take you to a store in Southern California that sold a ticket worth a million bucks. Tiny pupfish in California's Colorado River are postponing a water conservation project. The Imperial Irrigation District was going to scale back what it draws from the river in April, but now those plans won't start until at least June. Wildlife officials will need to find a way to ensure the endangered pupfish will be protected since limiting the flow of water through irrigation drains could harm the already endangered desert pupfish. NASA's first indigenous female astronaut is hoping to inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers. Fox 10's Mark Martinez shows us how the California native is taking her story on the road. For Colonel Nicole Nam, having the title of being NASA's first indigenous woman to go to space is special. Many years ago, she would have never thought she would be where she is today. And I didn't have it all figured out. I didn't know that I wanted to be an astronaut. I didn't even know that that was a possibility. She reflected on her journey while speaking to students at Estrella Mountain Community College in Avondale. Colonel Nan is a registered member of the Wailaki of the Round Valley Indian tribes. During her six months in space, she completed two spacewalks. 
Being in space absolutely changed, it changed my perspective uh, on life, on our planet. Uh, it's just absolutely incredible seeing the Earth from low Earth orbit. But that isn't the only thing on her intensive resume. She's a colonel in the Marine Corps and served as a combat fighter and test pilot. Colonel Mann's story is now inspiring the next generation of astronauts, engineers, and scientists. She really showed me that there are a lot of opportunities for um, people of indigenous backgrounds, um, and it's not a detriment where you come from or, or you know, your, who you are. About 60% of our students are first generation students. So I think sometimes they need to see uh, people from in various STEM areas to come and talk about their journey and some of the obstacles that they have to overcome uh, to be successful. Her message is a simple one. You can do anything you put your mind to. It's amazing to see their eyes just light up and you can see their mind going and thinking about, wait, you've done something like this. Maybe that means I can do something like this too. And that was Fox 10's Mark Martinez reporting for us tonight. Colonel Mann worked as a robotic arm operator during her spacewalks. She and her crew helped to upgrade the International Space Station during their months long stay in orbit. A Utah grandmother is now a prize winning rodeo competitor. After Brenda Cropper retired, she decided to pursue her dream of becoming a cowgirl. And last December in Las Vegas, Cropper and her son in law won $97,000 at the World Series of Team Roping. Now her granddaughters are inspired, saying they want to compete in roping one day. Cropper is grateful that her dream paid off and that she could share it with her loved ones. This was by far a dream come true to, to go win that kind of money. We kept it in the family and, and that was that made it even sweeter. The nice thing about roping is it doesn't matter if you're big or little or anybody can do it and anybody can win and if you just keep after it. Cropper was the only woman among the top 50 prize winners. She says she wants to see more cowgirls in the future. A Mega Millions player here in the West has a $1 million winnings to claim. The $1 million ticket in last night's drawing was sold at a liquor store in Van Nuys, California, just outside of L.A. While that's a decent payout, it is not that larger $1.1 billion jackpot we've been telling you about. That top prize will go to someone who bought a ticket on the other side of the country in New Jersey. Still, people showed up to that store in Van Nuys today, and they say they love knowing that the store right in their neighborhood sold a million dollar ticket. Because I come to the store like every day. Um, my husband's the one that plays. I'm not really a player, but knowing that it's true, someone won so close, like it kind of gives you the opportunity to try it and maybe you win. All right, the winners of that million dollar ticket in Southern California and the $1.1 billion ticket in New Jersey have yet to come forward. All right, there still are some prizes to claim here. Lotto players have a shot at winning another jackpot. $865 million up for grabs in tonight's Powerball drawing, the fifth biggest jackpot in the game's history. It has continued to grow ever since January 1st. That does it for West Coast Wrap tonight. Have a great night.